There's many ways to like, you know, greet somebody in the urban Southwest Louisiana community. You say, whoa, what it do? What's up? What's good? My brother, a bunch of different things. You know, it's a bunch of different responses. You know, I'm cooling. I'm good. I've been chilling. All that good stuff. But like the one I hate the most is like, when like boys be like, I don't know, just try to out humble each other or something. I don't even know how to properly call it. Like, like, whoa, what it do? Oh, you got a big timer. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to get like you. Oh, you know, you, you got it. You know, what's popping tonight? Oh, you got all the moves. I always just hated that. Like, I just never really been a fan of that response. Like, I don't know why it just like always did something to me. Like, you know, just, just keep it pimping, you know, what would it do, man? Cool. And not no, whoa, you got it big time. I'm trying to get like you, man. I always hated it. Whoa, welcome to the Best Friend Weekend Podcast. It's your man, Aldo Nice. Oh, it's your boy, Lose, a.k.a. C.A.P. And it's your man, Raj. No, it's not your man, Raj. <laughs> so let me tell you, give me get, give you a little story before we get to Rumble's, Rumble's um, interesting talk today. Give you a little story about Raj Smooth. So I sent out a text. What time last night? Um, It was like 10 something last night. It was, it was pretty early. Morning. And I was like, look, we're going to record at this time. Yeah. We all good with that? Cool. Boom, boom. The boy responded. Okay, buku messages today in the text group. Definitely. And then when it's time to record, man, give me an extra uh, hour. <laughs> hour or two. <laughs> Thing is, I mean, you know, the well, I'm walking on stop no show. So we Shout can't. Shout out Rod Smooth. You know, this One podcast time, is brought to you by Rod Smooth, but this podcast is not featuring Rod Smooth. <laughs> Ooh, it's just, it's, just it, it's not Shots Fired. It's, <laughs> it's a real thing, man. But you know, he got it. He got it. He you know, got you it. got it. You do. You do. No, man, I'm trying to be like you. Nah, I'm trying to, hey, hey. I'm he trying working. To like I'm trying to work like you, him. You got all the moves. He got all, look, he got the job. He the one I'm, getting all the money. Living off your gas. I'm just trying to, look, man, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get a job like you. Man, I'm trying to work. Live off your gas, not suffocate. Can I, Shout can I pay Rumble. some bills? Shout out Rumble Williams. Yeah, I mean, you can't hate a man for paying bills. But, no, I mean, I, see, I'm actually a very big fan of what Rumble was talking about. I'm all about the, boy, you got it. Wow. Wow, well, what's that? Oh, what well, cooling? Be cooling, bro. I'm all about the I'm trying to be like you. I'm not about that though. <laughs> no, you're not. You better not be like that. I always say that. I say that all of the time. I mean, but it be people that you really don't want to be like though. You never tell somebody you really want to be like. I'm trying to get like you. Well, then that would that would be too much like the truth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying you always you be trolling when you say that. But I love the response when they come back like, Oh, nah, oh, nah, boy. I ain't got nothing. I got three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> You the big time, but yeah. you the big time, but you the one working at rice. Right, right. That first thing that you go working at rice, man. I'm trying to do what you do. Look at him. I think I just had an interaction like that in the barber shop. Now that I'm thinking about it, I saw a little dude who like a principal, and I told him, I said, uh, "Oh boy, I see you doing big things, boy. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get it like you get it." Oh, I know exactly who you talking about. Yeah, man. But I don't. I'm not Definitely trying to get it like, like he get it. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I really don't really want to get it. He like just him. got off work. Yeah, I don't want to. Since six this morning, he been at work. I don't want to. I don't want to get it like he gets it. He getting ninety though. Eighty. Seventy five. Seventy two. Stop counting that man pockets. I count man. His pocket though. Maybe he just, getting. Maybe he getting money. Who cares I if he getting money? I don't want to. Like that's it's it's too much, man. And then sure. in in certain occupations, as far as teacher talk, it's like oh shit, ninety sound like you getting money. Mm-hmm. And a lot of different occupations that sound like oh really okay. Entry, pretty, entry level salary. Pretty, yeah. Okay. No, Got you. yeah. pretty good for yourself. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's all relative. Talk Everything relative. I'm making 350. <laughs> oh, 90. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. It's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah. What'd you go to school for? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, that's what they're making these days. Okay. I didn't know. I was aware. It's been so long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 90. I remember those days. Yeah. Wow. Rough. Yeah. I was roughing it when, Hard I, was, on you, huh? when I was 22. Yeah. <laughs> Seven bedroom apartment. I remember those days. Bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> Jameson in the refrigerator. Jameson. Jameson in under freezer. Yeah. <laughs> well, man, you know um, the the biggest the biggest story of the week. So it's the thing that we gonna um, probably crack off with. Gotta gotta talk about it, man. Yeah. It's on uh, Donda West son. Um, <laughs> Northwest daddy. R. I. P. Donda. You know, um, Kim K's husband. Bruce Bruce Jenner's um, ne- um, son in law. Kanye Kanye Kardashian. Uh, all of the above. Um, so we, we obviously then looked at it and looked at it from different um different different points of view. What'd you think about it? Well, I mean what you what did you watch it on anyway? Uh I I watched uh 
Really, every really interview you had, I watched it on YouTube. Uh, I don't mean that. I don't mean it's the service. I think I said no, that wrong. Yeah, you did. What I was about to go to. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I saw the TMZ one. I saw the Charlemagne interview, and I uh, listened to Ti. Ti actually went and talked to him face to face, and uh, I believe Ti is a stand up guy. So I, I don't see him embellishing. I think uh, I think Ti has from, the has uh, the turpitude. Uh, yeah, to- <laughs> embellishing rhetoric coming from uh, African American Theonius, <laughs> 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 such as such as a man of his stature. Uh, <laughs> his, his brilliance would make me allude yeah. to the fact that he is. Belligerent. See, see when 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 you when you spew in rhetoric, you perpetuate. <laughs> you know so anyway, I, I I listen to everything. I try to get it from all angles, from just what he was saying, and from my my eyes and my views. I just feel like Kanye West don't understand to this day that you're the person who said on live television with three jillion people, three billion people watching that George Bush don't like white people, black people. You can't you can't start there. In where you at now? Like he and I, I really don't believe he has. I think he's. I don't know if he's on meds and he's still in like kind of psychosis a little bit. But he doesn't. It's not. It's not the house way, Kanye. For me, he don't. He believe it. I think he he willing to say it, but his heart ain't into it. Because you know when Kanye heart into it, you really can't tell him nothing. And what I'm getting is that people are talking to him and saying what they're thinking about it, and he's actually listening now. Maybe it's a new Kanye or, or something, but I just don't see that passion in his eyes about it. When he when I see his eyes, it looks blank and empty in there. You know what I mean? I, I just think he's been in Calabasas for <laughs> way too long. You know what I'm saying? Without even just, I don't think he's went and got soul food from some place with, with no AC in a while. And I think sometimes you have to stay humble. I mean, I say that, I mean, not actually going, but you have to stay humble and, and be around grassroots people who are actually going through struggles. And, you know, if you stay somewhere for so long and live a certain type of life, and you're not watching CNN or watching what's going on. You'll miss these things. You know what I mean? So I don't think he's as close to the struggle or as close to black people as we think. I think like I just think he's thinking like OJ at this point. You know what I mean? He got a, he has an OJ mentality at this point. He's thinking that, you know, wearing the hat is gonna change it like we did the N-word. No. Uh, you know, he can switch some stuff up on the hat and make it different. Yes. But, you know, I just think he doesn't know his real, real passion with it. I think he wants to do something. But I don't think he know what angle of his passion with it. You know what I'm saying? He hadn't thought about it from all angles. Or he just not normal Kanye gun, gun hole enough to be like, I don't care what y'all think about it. You know what I mean? He actually cared. Like, the TMZ interview. After that dude had ran him, you know, what, what women say, read him, read him his rights. Hmm. <laughs> After he checked him, Kanye went so on he undressed him. He undressed him. He did. He got him butt naked in there. Because you sounded stupid. Cause, but you know, I thought, when I watched that TMZ interview, I had we only watched a clip, and it made it look like when Kanye made the the, the remark about slavery, that that was the rebuttal. In no, reality, no. that was at probably the four minute mark yeah. of the video. And if y'all haven't watched it already, um, y'all can go on YouTube or whatever. Um, yeah. it's a thirty minute interview. That happened at like the four minute mark. His rebuttal was way at the end of the interview, yeah. meaning he had time to really sit down and think about how to um. How to read Kanye in front of everybody, yeah. and he did it. I mean, he did his thing. I mean, with and, and, I, I think he, and he wasn't even disrespectful. That's he wasn't. He, he, he didn't shut Kanye out. down. Mm-hmm. He was just saying, "Look, bro, you hurt me just now." Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm hurt, and I'm gonna tell you why. You know what I mean? And, I, and you can even see uh, the little gay white dude's um, face when he said uh, slavery was a, a, a. It sounded like a choice to me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, even the white dude was like. We'll definitely get back to to the slavery is a, is a choice thing, but I want to go back to your whole take on I on just, Kanye as a human being these days, as far as who he thinks he is in America, like who he thinks he is in the big picture. Kanye lost right now. I don't think he know who he is right now. You know, it's funny. I, I like what I with the first thought I had. Um, this this podcast is brought to you by the Harry. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Jason. Uh, this podcast is brought to you by. Edo food truck. Hey, bro! Shout out them Buddha and tacos. I'm coming this weekend. Just I don't, I don't. I'm probably coming with some slippers. I just want some Buddha and tacos. Best tacos you ever had in your life, dog. Go ahead. This podcast is brought to you by Edo Hand Car Wash. <laughs> I need to get my car washed too. So um, he, the, he he the, he the boss. You know, you know, yeah. Mukamu Blue is the landlord, and I guess I'm the celebrity. But the thing is, <laughs> um, we we used to talk to the Harry all the time about this. He had he had two voices. Now he got three voices. Mm-hmm. So he got his Jay Harry voice where he with us like, "Why, nigga, what's up? Why, yep. boy, y'all boys cooling, y'all boys B town talk, mm-hmm. right?" Jay Harry. But he also got um, his new voice is his is his boss voice. Mm-hmm. So sometimes he'd be around his, his his employees at his establishments. He'd be like, "Come on, man, look, I need you guys yeah. to do what you're supposed to do. 
I don't need to be coming up here, man, all the yeah. time to be telling y'all what to do, man. Yeah. Y'all got, man, I talk to him, man. He the, he the, he the manager. Yeah, I'm, man. the, I'm the boss. You know, that's his boss voice. But the third one that we've been knowing for years is, is, is his white man voice. Mm. It's his work voice. Mm-hmm. Hi, hi, how you doing? Um, this is, this is, this is Jason. Yeah. <laughs> how, how, how might I help you? Yeah. We all code switch. It's yeah. a black thing, right? Always. We're able to maneuver in different, in different circles. Mm-hmm. Because we're able to do that well. I mean, obviously, when like I thought something very interesting this week. When you look at that video, that video is all of the hypeness. Mm-hmm. The video from Denver when we were turning up for Best Ooh. Friend Weekend Weekend. They do have a clip right in the middle with Los in the middle of a whole team of white boys just <laughs> pumping it up, <laughs> having him a time. He was cold switching. He got mm-hmm. to the point where he's like, this is the environment we're in. This is how I'm going to party. Hey, I'm going to act all. accordingly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so you have to be able to act accordingly, especially in, in, in it pervades how we do our everyday lives. Mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't have to code switch a bunch when I was a teacher. I mean, I just was me. Just I was I was still the same me, except yeah. just, you know, I'm talking to kids. Yeah. So take away the profanity. In my job now, a little bit of the same thing. But I do get in certain scenarios where I'm in front of a large audience mm-hmm. and I will change that voice to be a little bit more um, articulate, yes. a little bit more well-spoken, a little bit more... Um, like I, I'll be parsing my words, yes. but but what I try not to do is change my voice inflection. Well, I mean, maybe I change my voice inflection, I'll, but I don't try to change my tone. Mm. I try to talk the same tone. Like if I looked at my lyric, my my voice on on a recording, it should look the same. The thing about uh, what we laugh at with Jason is he changes his voice tone. Mm-hmm. He goes into a real high pitch. Hi guys, um, yeah man, I'm blah 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 yeah. blah blah blah. And it's funny because but that's that's what works for him. Yeah. That was the first thought I had about Kanye. I'm like, where is this? I mean, and I know he's been talking like that a while. Every interview, we've probably heard him for the last few years. But I hate it. I, it, it sounds crazy. But that's why I said, I don't know if he knows what he... I just don't... I don't know if he knows what he's doing. So like. so block people and... Yeah. Uh, like, what the yeah. fuck? You don't like, talk what? like that, Kanye. But he does now. Yeah, I mean, he does now. I'm saying. I wonder if that's his everyday speak. But, but, he was like, "So this happened the other day. Yeah. Um, his life. My is daughter now. was at school. Yeah, <laughs> and the the teacher told her that your mom is white mm-hmm. and your dad is black. Yeah, like she's not free anymore. Yeah, <laughs> she's a slave and peep, and now she knows that she's black. Yeah, like what yeah. the fuck are you like? Like no, this is life now. Though you stay in Calabasas, boy. How many people you hear come and say, whoa, what's that in there? Mm. <laughs> what's that, bro? You good? Cool. You don't hit it in Calabasas. You don't need to talk a particular way to be black. No, you, you don't, don't need to articulate yourself in a certain way to be to to, to endear yourself to a community. I He's agree. done everything that he needed to do to be the the word that they kept using and people um and Raj said it a bunch is that he's an icon. He kept saying he's an icon. Um what only I mean, you know, the only icon I know is I am just an icon living. Miss uh, 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 Moonwalk. Just, uh, uh, hit him with the moonwalk. Uh, yeah. Please yeah. go look at um Jaden Smith do some moonwalking. Just like at least twice a week, watch Jaden Smith moonwalk. You'll you'll enjoy it. But no, my whole point is, yeah, okay, I guess he's an icon, quote unquote. He's like Kanye is one of my favorite rappers of all time. And if Kanye comes out with an album fairly soon, I'm gonna listen to it. We yeah. talked about that. I'm not gonna hold myself hostage to his belief. But do we have the same ear when you listen to it? When knowing how he's feeling right now, I was thinking about this on my way home from work. Do do I have the same ear as I did before Kanye? Because Kanye was 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 Malcolm X. You know what I'm saying? He was, he was a proud black man. You know what I'm saying? In a room for the white folks saying fuck white people. You know what I mean? Now, you know you want to be Donald Trump. Like you know what I'm saying? <sighs> okay, but listen, you you I, I was actually ran up on you the other day and you was in your car and you was like ah uh, ah uh, bicking bicking ah uh, ah uh, get <laughs> no, some head. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's listening to that Cardi, y'all. <laughs> I rock with Cardi, but they wouldn't listen to my car. Headphones only. <laughs> okay. So he listened to that Cardi, but you don't necessarily believe that you don't really rock with the message all the time on her song when she's talking about um give get some pussy, fuck his suck his yeah, dick. I like don't, you don't, I don't you don't believe that. Nah, I don't. So you'll listen to that. So I mean in, in the same way, if it's jamming, I think you still gonna jam. Yeah, but I uh, yeah. I guess so. I just saying I I can't, I don't wanna compare Cardi to being a Kanye West number one. <laughs> 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 that's not that I even compare okay, to okay. I just don't I don't know like Kanye was it's a breath it's a breath of fresh air to me you know what I mean when he come out with some with some different tunes different beats and all that you know but I mean I'm a, I'm not gonna I'm not I'm not gonna lie now I'm, I'm gonna listen to it definitely gonna listen to it 
But I just want to know if I going, am I gonna have the same because I feel I feel funny about Kanye. I'm, I'm not, I don't want to denounce it's, him or nothing because okay. he feel that way. I just feel funny about the cat. Like I don't know. I just feel like damn Kanye. He did I, say um, he did say, and, and I want I want to hit the the quote exactly because I mean it's Kanye. We know some quotes, right? Yeah. Isn't he the one who said um um something like? It, all in the front of us, like he like you you know what song I'm talking about oh, spaceship uh, yeah. when he talking about um yeah let some let some white people walk in black people walk in I bet they show off they token yeah. black me yeah. oh now they love Kanye put him all in the front yeah. of the store yeah. right yeah with a on my in the blunt in the mall yeah man. like that kind I of rap that. is all about like I didn't see it at first I'm not even gonna lie to you when Kanye dropped the college dropout I was in the rap game I definitely didn't see it I was like. I'm not, well, no, no. I was like, I'm not, I wasn't a huge fan. I was like, I don't really like this Kanye West. I think he's trying to steal a lane that's kind of like we in college, or like whatever, whatever. And we was talking about it and, you know, but then I actually listened to the album a lot and I was like, no, Kanye West is the truth. Yes. And he's, he, he's, he's live rapping about stuff I know about mm-hmm. in like a, a much, like he's wearing the pink polos. He's got the backpack swag. He's. Um, he's he's living and talking about things that I can definitely relate to. He made it and he's cool to the be voice and not be a gangster. He's the vo- he was the voice of a whole. Like people used to say, he was a backpacker on a baller's budget. Like he had those backpack rhymes that a Talib Kweli mm-hmm. would have on most deaf, but his rhymes were a little bit more palatable. Yeah. You could hear him. Um, you can understand what he was saying. It wasn't like he was rapping all. It, it, he was rapping no. slow mm-hmm. and very like I got very elementary. But dope in, yeah. in 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 you know yeah, he had he, he had lyrics now he he, he, he was he was speech he was killing them niggas on yeah. that lyrical shit yeah. mayonnaise colored yeah. whip I push yeah. miracle, miracle whips whip. yeah like <laughs> like yeah. it's Kanye yeah. so it took me a while to figure it out but then I figured it out I was like oh yeah he's he is the voice mm-hmm. but he got to a point where I think it was around that album where he was like um I want to say even it might have even been graduation or. One of those where he kind of started going off the deep end. Eight oh eight and heartbreaks. I like, even though I people did didn't like it. Which one with the spaceship? Which one with the spaceship? Yeah, that's on? the one I was thinking. I and thought that was graduation. I thought that was graduation. It might not be. It I think I got it down. But um, all yeah. that power, like those. I was like, oh, he's going. He's okay. He's trying some different it was genres. Graduation. graduation. It was that's like funny. it was different genres. Like obviously for 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 my life, my favorite Kanye album is always going to be um, late registration. I like late registration. Late registration was was was, was classy, yeah. but. Even even still, the life of Pablo was classic. Fire, dog. So, and I, if I'm not mistaken, that was his last album. Yeah, I didn't love Jesus as much, but the life I of Pablo like was Jesus was too. It uh, was dark. He had that bound to though. Yeah. Bound to was the shit. Bound straight. to fall it. Yeah. That shit was damn. But my whole point is, it got to a point where Kanye was still he like anything he dropped. I felt like I would like. Mm-hmm. So you do have a very legit point. Are we gonna be like I like that Kanye now? Yeah. Like, are we gonna? Are we gonna continue to rock with it, or are we gonna be like, nah? And then like, I'm not with it. Another side of me feels feels the way of, oh, you know, we've been calling himself a genius. We've been calling him a genius. You know what I mean? Is he a genius? Yes, he he's very smart with the beats and all that stuff. Genius? Eh, okay, maybe so. I like that. Maybe so. I'm not sure, but I mean, I, I don't like call. You can't call yourself a genius. I'm here for that conversation. You know what I'm saying? But genius, eh, you you're very dope at beats. You know what I'm saying? I think genius is impact the world just not one thing you know what I mean but when you start to if everybody keeps saying it, you start saying it yourself you start to believe that in your in your own head and then every genius is crazy every genius has some type of mental issue <laughs> it's no genius who just walk around here regular cool chilling you know what I'm saying he ain't crazy in some kind of way you know what I'm saying they either fucking their cousins or <laughs> you know what I mean jumping off deep doing or in a wheelchair can't move something wrong you can't you know what I'm saying? LeBron James is the best basketball, basketball player on earth. He balding and he whines. You know what I mean? He just can't be perfect. Though. You can't have it all going you on. You can't have it all. I mean, they did have that one dude who played, I talked about him on the podcast before, played safety for the uh, for Florida State and he was a Rhodes Scholar. So he did, yeah, he did have a lot going on. Yeah, very few. But something else wrong with him we don't know about. So this is, me, this is me being 100% honest. I'm smarter than Kanye. I'm more of a genius than Kanye. Let's just be honest. He might be a musical um, savant, yes. where he, he he's very good at music, and he's in, he in far, he, he's yeah. got a different ear. Yeah. But if we're talking about genius in a typical sense of um, intelligence, nice. I'm smarter than Kanye, and it's not even a question. Um, I rob with that, but I got four dollars on that. <laughs> but I just think it, I think it's another thing. Like I mean, 
So let's go back to that to that point that um that that he talked about that I thought was very interesting and everybody's obviously latched on about slavery being a choice. I I I, I can't like when I hear stuff now they the old me now. Um, I don't I don't just run and you, just because you say it wrong or you stupid as hell. I try to listen to the whole conversation, try to think what you could mean by that. You know what I mean? Like what could he have meant other than his words, right? Because some I know I say a lot of stuff that come out wrong. You know what I mean? And I might miss something else, but it comes out crazy. But I don't I was trying to interpret that any other way it could be interpre- mm-hmm. interpreted. But I couldn't. I don't it's not it's no way you could spin saying slavery was a choice. All them people, four hundred years, that had to be a choice. Okay. You know what I mean? I, I just don't don't see that point being made or justified any other way. You know what I mean? You you have to be meaning what you say when you say that. You can't say slavery was a choice like, you know what I'm saying, me coming here and doing this with you. Right? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? That's not a choice. It's a choice for me to go home after work and not go to the gym. That's a choice. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, me being enslaved for 400 years, our people, our people being enslaved for 400 years, that wasn't a choice, bro. We ain't have one. You think we, we think we was like, you know what? We could be free. <laughs> <laughs> but now nah, I'm going to sit here and let master whoop on me and fuck my old lady some more. Like, Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna um, talk about this guy. And I'm not even gonna name him. I'm not gonna give him too much air on the podcast by naming him. It's a guy I went to college with, and I mean, you know, he's got sometimes he's got some hot takes. Mm-hmm. A lot of times he just I, I don't I don't know if if I even understand where he's coming from. But he said, "I get it. Y'all wouldn't have risked your life to break free of bondage. I would have. Apparently, that is something I'm passionate about. That makes me different from everyone else." I will never concede to being controlled. I realize that most people will for survival. We're just built different. So his whole point was that he wouldn't uh, like going back to that point. I wouldn't uh, as a, a slave. I wouldn't allow myself to slave. It seems be a slave. It seems like a choice. So you'd have died. He said I would have died before I would allow myself to be a slave. Too much killmonger, brother. Um, you can say whatever you want. Nigga said what you would do is might put a gun in your face until you got a gun in your face, dog. Mm-hmm. If you ain't never had a pistol in your face. You really can't. You can't tell me what you would do. I'm going to give you this. And this is the response that was given to me. And it was really good. And I just want to read it because it was really good. This podcast is brought to you by Jay Cavi, a.k.a. Jay Spriggs. And he said, nah, fam, I understand you, though, because I used to think that way as a child. I remember learning about slavery and watching Roots and thinking, how could a white family of seven, four men and three women, enslave a hundred slaves? Why didn't they just gang up and kill a master and his family in the night and take over? Why didn't they tell each other slaves to do the same on other plantation? As an adult... I begin thinking about all the factors. I look at mass shootings and I wonder why I don't 10 teachers rush to one shooter and mm. so do them. Then I consider what I'm not considering. Imagine when you're at your least expecting 10 people to break into your house, snatch you and your family, beat you, chain you. Do you fight them and risk the lives of your family? Mm. Then they put you in a boat with countless others and force you to row that boat for weeks to a place you've never seen or been. Do you fight them then? Then when you're on that boat and you see people beaten, tortured, mutilated, malnourished and dying from disease, that's when you choose to fight? You arrive malnourished, beaten, and sick in bondage, but alive. And then someone who thinks like you gets tortured to death in front of your eyes, as an example. Do you fight then and risk the lives of your family? If they sell you away from your family, do you fight? What if they kill your child in front of your face, to make an example? You get stole off and you still mal- malnourished in, in chains and sick. And you arrive at the plantation and another slave is tied to a tree. And being beaten, as an example, do you risk your lives? Or that of your family, because you didn't made it this far, or they didn't just, um, or they didn't do, or they didn't. Um, I'm not asking these questions for answers. I'm putting things in perspective. It's basically what he was saying. He had a lot so more in the sense, thing. man. It, it, and I, you know, I, I, I looked at that as point. I just gave him the like. I gave him the like. Yeah, um, that's real. I, I tossed him the, the heart emoji. I don't mm-hmm. know if the heart emoji or just the thumbs up. But it's a, it's an interesting thought when people start having that that exercise. And this is kind of the juxtaposition that I've been seeing a lot, which mm-hmm. is which is something I wanted to delve into. It's like two camps online that I've noticed amongst black people, and probably you've noticed block people. Block. That <laughs> that's the name of it, block people. <laughs> the people that um that that I've noticed, and it's this. It's like a, they got a whole team of black cats who are like, man, I get it. Y'all don't get Kanye. Y'all don't understand. I listen to it. He's making a point. But y'all, y'all don't get it. And like he's making a point, a bigger point about 
uh, just a mentality of allowing yourself to be enslaved. He wasn't literally talking about slavery. Y'all don't get it, but I get it, and I'm I'm woke, and I I understand what Kanye's saying. But y'all could go ahead on. Yeah, I just think anybody with that opinion is a whole hoe at you. Now you you're definitely a whole hoe, a complete one. And not even you a hoe. You just you you think you know something, but you don't. Like, you, you, you're over here talking as though you know, you don't know. My thing is, you never said that before. So, because he said it now, all of a sudden, you own. I hate when people you hop on some... You ain't never said, oh, I'm, I'm making this, this mm-hmm. uh, making great American, uh, make, make America great again hat. You So, now you want one, too. And you see what he's saying. So, now you're going to go buy mm-hmm. that hat mm-hmm. and rock it and mean the same thing Kanye say he mean or whatever he meant. You know what I mean? Because he don't really know. I just hate when people hop on bandwagons of shit that they think is like, oh, man, that, that was real... Like, like, oh, that man, he he's smart, and the rest of y'all niggas don't know. Yeah. I mean, you don't know. They got certain things that 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 yes, we hop behind and say, man, a lot of these niggas don't understand. But it's real. This ain't one of them. Yes, it's not. It's not. This ain't one of them experiences. This ain't one of those ep- incidences. No. This is an incident of someone who is either and I and we gotta boil it down to the two things that it possibly could be mm-hmm. trolling everybody yes. to try to sell records and and get some buzz out there because he kind of been quiet and I don't want to be in the media. Yeah. Or somebody who kind of got a little mental illness happening where they just kind of shooting off at the mouth. I think it's the former, not the latter. I, and I, I, I just, I, if, if, let's say it is the former. I think it's a little bit in between. Let's say it's, 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 it's the former. I, I mean, the latter. I just feel like, listen, somebody got to grab that boy and be like, hey, relax. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you my friend. I'm, if I'm Kanye, I feel like you're going to be like, Los, look here. Relax, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I get it. All the extra whoop the whoop. The Crips are gonna beat me up, man. Yeah, I was like, that's, yes. That's so cool. <coughs> that's a whole gang out here, boy. You can get up from an ass whipping, man. They gonna kill you out here. <laughs> Can you? I thought, man, like I'm Malcolm X, man. No. He's just talking out the side of his neck right now. But he believes it, which is okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I can't tell you he this subconscious stuff and all that. Listen, brother. You know, I, I just feel like he he has to relax and understand that it's a it's a race of people which you are black who have been going through these things that you're almost denouncing. You know what I mean? Like you're saying you can't. Like I'm not saying you're supposed to hate Trump. I don't like him. I don't hate him. I don't know him enough to hate him. Mm. You know what I mean? So I'm not saying you gotta hate Trump or hate everything he does. My thing is. You can't some of that stuff. When you say you with Trump and you love you, you got to, you got to make that shit clear what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You just can't make that broad statement, especially after all the things he's done to black and brown people, and really poor white folks. They just don't know yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying they just don't get because they're too busy not driving well. This part exactly. brought to you by CNA. <laughs> CNA. You know what I'm saying? So poor white people, he don't like y'all. Either. He don't mess with y'all. But the thing about it is, you have to make those those, those statements clear. Number one, you can't type them on Twitter. And think we gonna get it? Oh, you just can't make a broad, stupid statement, Simpson. Like you turn around and say, "I got lipo." Listen, to this y'all. I got liposuction, so y'all wouldn't call me fat like y'all did, Rob. My titties ain't as big as his, right? Come on, dog. That's when I. That's when I be like, he trolling. Yeah. That's when I be like, he trolling. Cause what does Rob being fat have, have to do, to with, do with you? You Kanye. You can gain seven hundred pounds and still be Kanye. Look at DJ Mustard. <laughs> Ain't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, on, I get I, it. I mean, and, and you know, one of the takes that he said, he, he talked a lot about um, black people don't have to block, people don't have to be um, <laughs> Democrats just so we can get food stamps, and uh, and basically that it's okay for black people to be Republicans. Let me let me let me See, set good. the record straight. Raj Move isn't here to to defend this position, and I, I I had planned to ask him about it. But once again, man, look, this is principality like anything else. If Raj isn't going to be on time, we just like once again, we can't we can't do that. But he, we allow not even allow we 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 actually embrace his opinion when he talks about things from a conservative standpoint mm-hmm. because he's a black man and a black man is, is allowed to be whatever he wants to be. True. We don't marginalize him as a part of this podcast. I mean, now people make jokes and say, "Oh, Raj White or Raj Trump and yeah. and clown and shit like that," but we still appreciate his opinion. Yeah. Whenever he's strongly defending an opinion on something, we 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 appreciate it and we go back and forth with it, meaning that we're okay with a black man being whatever kind of political stance that That's he wants fine. to take it is fine it is up to you but don't outwardly support a movement that has been very unfair to us as a people yeah and how and basically not i mean you know it, he could have been a, went a long way by just 
having certain caveats when he said it. Yeah. Um, I, I rock with Trump because that's my boy. That is actually fine. Yeah. Because everybody, Trump was popular before he became president. I could, rap. I could legit see Trump being, Trump fun. being fun. Almost big grand bitch about a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Who don't have fun doing two pussy? What's more fun than that? Yeah, me too. I was like, yeah. Yeah, but, nah, but yeah, I get you. He's 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 fun, probably. But that doesn't mean you have to go like Tom Brady when he was like, "Oh, I rock with Trump because that's my guy." People gave him a hard time yeah. for it too. Yeah. Um. So it's the same type of thing, but you have to say, "Look, I still I don't agree with everything he does." Yeah. Kanye kind of was making it look like he was throwing though. Like that's what kind of pissed me off when he started throwing Obama into it and saying Obama didn't. But I think that's just salty. No, he 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 feels some kind of way. I saw the interview. He said Obama came to him before he ran. Him and his mother sat down with him and his mother before they before he ran and was like, "You my favorite rapper. I just let you know I'm running. I want your support." You know what I mean? And then Kanye did something, and um, he ended up calling Kanye an asshole. That guy's an asshole because yeah. Kanye felt like since he from Chicago, he should be the president of Chicago. Yeah. Fuck the United States. Absolutely. And the free world. He should be the president of Chicago, which is the dumbest shit ever. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? So he, he, it's personal with him with Obama. He, I definitely think any, so. Anything, any, any, like, he started out like a little child, like a little baby. You know, sometimes a baby wants this and they don't get their way, they fall out. That's what Kanye does. If you was the most famous person in Shreveport, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, or one of it, then somebody else from Shreveport becomes way more famous, mm -hmm. and you feel like, I bet he felt like, Obama should be putting out that olive leaf to him and not Jay Z. He said to that. him and not Kendrick Lamar. That's to exactly him and not yeah. whomever else. So I, I don't. He felt I don't, some kind of way. I never heard that part of the interview. But, he felt some but kind I of way. understand that he would feel some kind of way about but that. My, my thing is this: that's, that's only human. No, 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 okay. it's only human to it's, feel away. It's, it's only human when you when you're a regular dude. You Kanye West, so you're a wild card. You come in, you, I bring you to the correspondent, then uh, invite you to the White House. You jump on stage with that nonsense. I don't know what you're gonna do. Mm. You know what I mean? You're a wild card. He said it. Like, you're a wild card. You can't trust a wild card. So my thing, if you understand that, you got to get that man can't be risking his presidency. But white people already don't like him saying this and saying that. He invite Kanye West to the to the White House, take a picture with Kanye West. Five minutes later, Kanye West up on the table talking white supremacy, you know, black dead, black. You, know, oh, you can't, you can't. Block, not, block people. Block people. No, it was, black, it was niggas then. It was black <laughs> niggas then. I don't know where this block shit came from. It's a past couple years <laughs> after he was on the opioids. <laughs> Number one, why, like Kanye, you got enough money to get to to get a trainer where you can just eat beef fit foods. Like you can have somebody fix you. A you think you food. think some of it is the fact that he was jealous that um, Tristan Thompson was getting the most pub nah, in, in his family. Got mad. Tristan Thompson, I'm Thompson. the token nigga right yeah, here. Tristan Thompson, yeah. you trying to take my and and, take my and Travis Scott, y'all trying to with your tall, strong jawline, slim. And he, Tristan's only doing straight up, rapper. straight up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He mad. <laughs> All right, look, we dedicated more than half of the podcast to Kanye. I mean, it's an interesting topic, and I'm, I'm thinking it's gonna prevail. It's gonna, it's gonna keep coming up. Probably next week we'll, uh, we'll touch on it a little bit. But they got some other stories that I wanted to touch on while we're here. A couple of stories that Officer Friendly would probably love. And we're gonna talk about a little, a little cop drama right quick. So the first one I want to talk about. Oh no, you want to talk about the? You want to talk about the the, the huge daddy? The no, mom? no, let me, let me go ahead. Shit, we, we, we get right. some funny shit. <laughs> Look here. Um, oh, we're going to know if you heard about this story. The feds ID a jail guard accused of sexually, a sexual assault by his huge hooked shaped penis. Okay. Uh, Lieutenant Perez is accused of forcing, of forcing at the, uh, of forcing a woman at the Metropolitan Detention Center to give him oral sex and prosecutors said they were able to nail him as the suspect as, as a suspect when multiple accusers described his distinctive phallus. <laughs> All right. So they went around dropping everybody's pants. This boy obviously had a huge hook shaped, uncircumcised penis. And that's how they found who out who it was. They say it smelled like piss too. The lady, the uh, <laughs> 30, oh, 38 year old former inmate testifies on the stand. And said, uh, she, she first approached her when she was in the, uh, cloud, uncamered, uh, office, uh, getting cleaning supplies or whatever. And she enjoyed the hugs and kisses that she used to get from him because she was lonely. All right. And then one day he just pulled that thing out on her. She mm. said it was huge and hook shaped and uncircumcised. <laughs> and she said, I would have been all over that shit. These are, this is a quote. Quote, I would have been all over that shit if it didn't stink. <laughs> she said his dick smelled pissy. 
So he had schmegma. He a grown man, didn't know how to pull that extra skin back and wipe that daddy. He just pee, let it go, right? I don't know the life of a flap nigga. I don't either. <laughs> I feel bad for you. I don't know the life of a flap nigga. They, I mean, I'm assuming turtle head dad. I'm assuming them boys got more girth, right? I'm assuming they got they got some more stuff going on, but you got an extra two inches with that skin though. No, that don't count. <laughs> it, def- it, de- it definitely don't count. I feel like it look like a it should be that how you know how pussy lips look. <laughs> no, stop. Okay, so my question is: when they say huge uncircumcised, I wonder what huge mean. She said huge. They ain't show no picture. I don't know no, they that. didn't. I mean, you well, she know. Was, she said it was mammoth. <laughs> quote. These are quotes. And he had everybody doming him up in jail. He said, if it if, if it didn't stink, I would have been all over that shit. And I guess he know that it, everybody in jail, they got to take like tests. So I guess he know if they're clean or not. Yeah. And he not. He pissy. Pissy. I don't think that's... That don't sound like a, no, a just, disease. It just sounds like a no, funky you, you nigga. You can definitely get them chicks... Uh, What they call it? Um, What you call disease? Not disease, but... Uh, pissy, 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 pissy? No. Um, uh, what you call it? A UNA. Is it UNA? UTI? Yeah, right there. <laughs> <laughs> a UTI dad. I mean, I guess he could, but I, I don't think he was smashing them. I think he was just getting that dough. It was like three offices they said in the story, yeah, and like yeah. two other ones already didn't got like one got like a hundred and something years. Yeah, because they were taking advantage of the inmates. Like, to what? Push me orange down. is the new black. Yeah, he tried the... to push me down. To, uh, you know, you know, try to push my head down. You know, uh, so I could suck his dick. <laughs> the woman weeping. I felt used at this point. After you've been kissing and hugging him, I felt used at this point. I felt like I was making a mistake. Like I wanted to be touched by another human, being it was. Be, but it's just, it just wasn't him. I just was lonely. It made me feel normal and alive again because you know you in jail, you feel dead. Okay, so the whole point is he didn't take he didn't he didn't take advantage though, right? No, nah, he didn't rape her. When she said no, he just he said, pushed cool. her head down a little bit, and you know when you're in jail, you get, you get good nutrition. I guess her neck was strong. She like no, the neck was definitely strong. She like no, 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 and um, you know he backed off and he let her go on by the way. I wonder if she could smell it from the di- the distance. It was. I wonder if she could. That means it's funky then. Funky, funky. Or, or she lying. She was on her knees about to hit that head. And he grabbed. When she smelled it, she was like, oh, no, nah, I ain't sucking that. And then he was like, come on, chill. Yeah, exactly. And she was like, uh-uh, it's tight. And he was like, bitch, you got me doing all this? That's, I think that's what happened. I don't think he just walked up to her and grabbed. Because they was already kissing and hugging. I don't think he just walked up to her and grabbed. Well, I don't think he just grabbed her head and like, come and give me. I think they was kissing. He pulled that thing out. She was like, oh. And then she smelt it. I was like, nah, I'm straight. I don't. I'm not a fan of any of, of any of this establishment of anything that's going on there, man. The boy needs to stop, man. The fact is, they went around. You had to like they have buku suspects suspects in the case, so they had to go around looking at everybody's penis. That's the. So if you was if you walked to the jail, that's not how it happened. That's exactly how it happened. No, it's not how it happened. Okay, they more than likely it was all ID'd him, and everybody said he got. They a big said they name. ID'd him by yes. his hook shape. But that that don't mean it's like a lineup. Willie Mammoth. Yes, it's not a lineup. That's what they did. They no, lined them all up. They don't do that. That's not you a thing. They know. brought him in. It no. was like drop your pants. No, oh yeah, that's the dick they've been talking no, about. No, they brought that all the boys in. That is like that ain't the dick. That ain't the dick. That ain't the dick. That's the dick. No, it was like. It's like, let me see the dick. That ain't it. <laughs> let me smell it. Yeah. I think they had to waff, you know? Yeah. They couldn't, like, just, like... You had to break yeah, it Yeah, you got to waff. You got to waff. <laughs> so you don't get it too much, like, in your, in your nasal you, palate. The, in the, the article, it was in fine print all the way at the bottom. It said that they had, like, 10 people lined up putting out that meat. And they said they knew four of them wasn't it for show. Sure. They were straight and it was Peter Weeders. <laughs> it's like nah, y'all y'all can go home. Y'all can go home. You good. <laughs> y'all good. The only time having that little wood like saving save, save your life. Save your life. Oh yeah, yeah, nah, yeah. I'm good. Is, nah, that ain't me. That is definitely a big you huge say, hook shape. No, hook like, shape. No. Nah. You said you said hold up. You said it smell like piss. <laughs> It's big, it's uncircumcised, and, and it's hook shaped. Yeah. That ain't me. That ain't me. <laughs> that, ain't me. <laughs> that boy, she said extremely hooked. <laughs> she. That boy had to hit her from the side. <laughs> <laughs> Leave that man alone, that's dog. That's funny, man. That so, was funny. Man. Another story that's that's not too funny, but it's it's it's, a, it's still in the police drama story, and it's just about it's about what's ethics, and um, it's something that that came up this week, man. Um. So a partial DNA, and this is all about the Sacramento, what they call him, the East Area Rapist. He got caught like a little while back. It said a partial DNA match with an unidentified um, relative of Joseph James D'Angelo, 
on a genealogy website led to D'Angelo's arrest as a suspect in a notorious East Area Rapist case. The Sacramento County DA's office said on Thursday, investigators recently found a familial DNA rat match to a sample connected years ago at a crime scene linked to the East Area Rapist. The family link that led the Sheriff's Department to D'Angelo's home on a quiet middle, uh, middle-class street in Citrus Heights, where they obtained the direct DNA sample from him after following him and picking up an unidentified object he discarded, according to Sheriff Scott Jones. I said a lot. Let me paraphrase and make it very simple to you what happened. Please do. The East Area Rapist case was an open case. He was notorious. It was happening for a while. His family member... Put their DNA on one of those DNA.com slash Ancestry.com slash Black DNA slash whatever one mm-hmm. of these things. 23 in me. Yeah. When last time you had 23 in you? Never had 23 in me. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he went to one of those sites and the family that got their DNA profile and they all were like, oh yeah, I'm 25% Scandinavian yeah. and 14% East African. Yeah. And they figured 6% out. 6% Indian. They, presented all, they figured out all of that. And then, some way, them people got their hands on that DNA evidence, and then we're like, okay, so this DNA is very close to the East Area Rapist DNA, so it's probably one of his family members, then went and found the most likely family member, which ended up being him, Joseph D'Angelo, and then followed him, got his DNA, and then arrested him for the case. So my thing is, they would have never even been on to him. They would have never thought about him. He wouldn't even been a, a suspect unless his family put their DNA in one of these DNA websites. Um, this was funny because wow. earlier last week, I was having a conversation with a coworker, and she made that exact point. She was like, I don't want to put my stuff on the DNA.com. And she said, this is the reason why. She said that I think that maybe healthcare people will use that information to deny people health care coverage. Like, they'll look at your DNA profile and say, oh, this person's predisposed to cancer. So we're not going to give them, we're not going to give them. So it's like a whole bunch of reasons why she was like, I don't, I, but she was like, it never occurred to me that something like this could happen. I ain't know the laws had access to that. They're not, I don't know if they're supposed to. And it's, it's just a crazy thing because it just brings up an issue of, of is it ethical or not? Like, we know, want, we want this rapist off the street, right? Yeah, I agree. It, it worked in this case. Let's say that it worked in this case. But once you open up Pandora's box, yeah. Now, now we they can start. They, if your parents put, they can book me. and My you. mom already in the system. They can book me and you for all of that. My mom, my mom, I'm sure my mom. Well, I'm, I'm saying like if you pick, if you if it, but it don't even have to be your mom. If any of your relatives are yeah. in there, and if like some kind of a huge database has access to it, they and they use look. it for police stuff. I mean, anything Everybody I do could get, anything you do is, is one step away from like minority report and shit yeah. like that where you could just say, oh, let's, let's, let's do the research and find out who did what. Let's go get them today, y'all. I mean. I don't like that. I, I heard like another it. story about like a guy that got shot. And I mean, I don't know if people out there might know a little bit more about that story. I said a guy got killed and the cops found his phone laying next to him and they picked up the phone and touched his finger with it mm-hmm. to open up the phone to get information. I don't like that either. Once again, all unethical. But if, if. If the end is, oh, they open the phone, and then on the phone it says, um, I, meet me I here, meet me here. Yeah. I, this is Ricky. Meet yeah. me here. Um, I got the, I got the dope. Yeah. And then they're able to go find the person who killed him. Yeah, you're going to say, okay, it worked in this case. Yeah. But where does the line get drawn to where you're able to do type of these type of things and it still be ethical? I, I think that, that, like you said, that, that line is really skewed at the end of the day because of the simple fact that that's privacy, man. That's my phone. Mm-hmm. And you the law. Now, I believe, I, like, me being who I am, I know they've done that before. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When it was unethical just to find some other stuff or try to hide a case. They, it's so many ways you can spin that. You know what I mean? So, the thing about it is, do we make the, the, the decision that we want that to go down for the greater good and some people take the L? Or we just want to complete, completely stop that and shut that down now? And then some people end up getting off, you know, with crimes or it doesn't help later. You know what I mean? It, it, it's 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 a it's a it's a slippery slope, man. It's a definitely slip- slippery slope. Yeah, I don't know. It's like it's it's a very interesting case, and the kind of to follow this, like they had a case a couple of years back where they were talking about um in the I think it was the San Bernardino shooting mm-hmm. where they were trying to get the iPhone records and trying to open the iPhone to find oh, out yeah. what stuff or my I took think it took a little bit of stuff. It took, no, it took them a long time to figure out the information because they had to like Apple wouldn't release it because mm-hmm. they were like we we. Pre- 
care about the privacy of our people. But then the, the response was, well, don't you care about public safety? Yeah. Do you give up individual freedoms for public safety? And that becomes a huge, huge, huge ethical yeah. dilemma. Um, no, I'm, I'm, of the mind that, anyway. I'm of the mind that if you're a cop, you get paid to do your job just like I get paid to do your job. Do your job. Yeah. Find out who the East Area Rapist is without using stuff that is, yeah. people don't think you should be using. It's definitely a cheat code. That's left, right, up, down, A, B, A, B. Now, if he would have put his, his DNA in there, maybe, I'm, maybe I even feel a little bit differently. Yeah, but you wouldn't like you, you, family. You know better than putting your DNA in there. Because you know you're out here raping, bitch. You know you're the East Area <laughs> Rapist. Come on, now. And you got your DNA sitting up on the database. I'm a, I'm a, let, me see, let me see if I'm scared to name it. Yeah, I'm, I'm half black. I'm almost black. Yeah, right. 3% black. But I feel like, me personally, just being a conspiracy theorist that I am, I feel like all that shit is open record. Mm. You know what I mean? I feel like all, all your iCloud, all your stuff, the people can get in there whenever they want to. No, they, they have, they, like, they have our addresses, how much our house is worth, how much you make, your social security number, phone number, your mom and them maiden name, all this stuff online for five dollars. Mm. You know what I mean? If somebody just really wants your information, they could go pay less than ten dollars for it and get everything. A whole running report, your credit score, everything for it. You know what I mean? Online right now. So I feel like, Everything is really open market. If they wanted my DNA, all they have to do is go into the the um the trash can in my bathroom and open up some toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> or, or no, or no. Nah, maybe they, maybe they don't. Maybe they don't. You don't put. <laughs> no, 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 I flush it. You know you use towels. I flush towels. You like a stand up little wet little wet towel. You like a stand up in the shower, bust in the sink. In the, <laughs> bust in the sink. A bust in the sink. Oh, you brush your teeth, daddy. <laughs> wipe the count off. Think of them. I hate y'all. Shut up. Like Let's talk about some sports stories for the last fifteen. Um, Shout out them pedals. We coming back, bro. Don't don't hold us down. With my play, I'm washing it and with my shirt tomorrow. I don't got an extra. I might steal it. It's not my extra. It's the same one. Oh, it's how y'all dry y'all t shirts over here. Well, I dried my t shirt because it was um because hey, I didn't want to put it in the in the yeah dog hand. I didn't want to put it in the Let's dryer this, to fuck clean up. Nah, nah, fuck them. Um, so. <laughs> You talking about the NBA playoffs? We'll see, man. Your boy, um, Kendrick LePerkins. Ah, <laughs> LePerkins. Out there suited and booted. He was about to fight Drake, man. Yeah. I feel like we talked that man into existence. We did. Like nobody was talking about Kendrick LePerkins yeah. last week. Until, and now. Yeah. My thing is. Now, like, Shaw Daddy suit, Kendrick Perkins is trending. Don't smoke with Drake. For what? Because Drake was cheering for his team? Come on, LePerkins. You think that was LePerkins' fault? What, I don't know. I don't know the story. I don't know. I don't know the story either. I, just I, know, just boys, like, I know the NBA came out today and told like Drake to chill out. Like when if you're in the front, of the, like you can't be cursing at players and standing up and wallet because you got front row seats. You can't be doing that. I mean, that's a bigger issue right now. That I guess Russell Westbrook started beating the um, beating the drummer by this that's about the white folk behind and the James gold. Harden slapping the um the, that dude camera, this cell phone camera today. Oh yeah. So it's a whole bunch I, of stuff. The white folk got to relax though. But I mean, Drake, Drake I, is half white folks. But yeah, he so is. he got to relax too. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But and I'm saying, I just think Drake be cheering his team on. I don't know if he be cussing at players though. He definitely was cussing at Kendrick Perkins yesterday. Kendrick Perkins don't even play. I know. And Drake posted something like, "I hate bench players who talk like starters." That's probably why they just going back. He probably told Drake to shut the fuck up. And then Drake like, "Nigga, you don't even play." Yeah. And that's how it was. So I ain't, they ain't, they ain't Drake fault. I mean, ain't nobody fault. I think it it, it it creates a good basketball environment. But if Kendrick Perkins would have stolen him, though, Kendrick Perkins too broke to steal him. Well, he ain't broke, but he would have been broke up. Drake, Drake is suing. You gonna steal? But Kendrick Perkins, you wouldn't make it out of the six. Don't talk like the six is some shit. That stop it. What? Stop it. You ain't scared of the six, man. I'm not scared of the six. I'm not scared <laughs> of the veal. I'm not scared of no shit that a rapper made. You scared of, of eight mile? No. I'm not scared of eight mile. mile. I'm not yeah, scared of yeah. none of that. Hey. Play with play with the six you want to. I'm scared, of, I'm scared of the Calio. I'm definitely scared of the Calio. The Magnolia. It's That's hot. it. It's hot in there. You got stuck in here on New Year's <laughs> Eve, yeah. You <laughs> got you couldn't breathe yet. It's hard for you to breathe yet. <laughs> no, nah, but yeah, I'm man, I just feel like it was just good banter. You gotta relax. My thing is this, bro, he a fan. Y'all have a couple words back and forth, but you won't fight Drake, dog. You six what you like eight feet tall? Like 300 pounds, you're going to fight light-skinned Drake, though. Relax, bro. Drake lift weights. Drake think he can fight. Man. Sometimes you got to beat a nigga up who think he can fight. For what? For the principal. No. Not 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 at the end. While you're in the NBA? On the street? Yeah. <laughs> 
I've been thinking this the whole playoffs though, and I mean, I think this might go back to the Pelicans and kind of talking about the um the, the Pelicans and I'm everything. Beefing them all. Like like I, I I want somebody to sneak um Draymond Green. He deserves it. Like I don't like, but you know the thing is because we who nah, like, like I'm Draymond. used I'm you no but we who so somebody think about it if we hooping. If somebody was out there acting like Draymond Green, the whole like in in the stakes is as high as the NBA player. So you talking about yourself at this point? I'm you not. Talk, I, you no, talk, stop, you stop, talk crazy no, just like Draymond. No, no, you shut, don't talk crazy like that. Fuck up. You don't. I'm not in niggas' face yelling in niggas' face and shit like that. No, okay. absolutely not. That's not true. Face. That's not true. But you be talking. But crazy. yeah, you, nigga could talk all he wants. Like, but no, I don't talk like that. No. No, you dis- okay. that's I disagree. Okay, that I, you watch the games, you see this yes. nigga shut the fuck up, nigga. I be like, oh, and he be all in people's face, rolling on the ground. Yeah, he, do, he be yeah, doing he, all yeah, kind he, of crazy. He, he go, he go extra. He's extra. Yeah, but that, but you know what though? That's why Charles Barkley said he want to punch him in the face. Yeah, Chris Webber tried to try to say he want to start nobody's team. He let Chris Webber have it real, real mature. He wouldn't start on anybody else's team. He say Draymond Green wouldn't start nowhere else in the league. That's yeah. true, probably. Nah, Draymond Green would start. He's starting for the Pelicans? Absolutely yes. not. Yes. Absolutely not. Aside, if Boogie not there, aside, what you call it? Yes. If is. Boogie's not, you just said a big caveat. Like if, yeah, if he's coming off the, yes. yeah, if, if, yeah, if, if everybody's so hurt. You don't yeah, want Draymond Green on your team? No. I want Draymond Green on my team. I don't want Draymond Green. Oh, be alone. I'm not good. I don't want him. I don't want him. I gotta look at his. I gotta look at Welvin all the time. Jesus. I gotta look at it, all them teeth he got in his mouth. But no, I like Draymond. He can play on my team any day. No. I like Draymond. Okay, another like sports story. Um, somebody else we talking about who on the, who be on the bench. Patrick Beverly got hurt right at the beginning of the season. Um, so he kind of been quiet. You ain't heard nothing about Patrick Beverly. Little known fact: people used to always say um, that Patrick Beverly is who founded Lyra Galore. Ain't that who? Yeah, I think that was. I think that was the one who put it in. Um, put it in the game. Mm. You start off with a Patrick Beverly. That's like an entry level celebrity. A rich, a rich Pat, Patrick yeah. Beverly. Ain't, ain't hurt. Ain't hurt. That's a perfectly fine entry level celebrity yeah. for a fine chick. Yeah. Especially a, like a stripper type. Yeah. Like you get you a Patrick Beverly, a Smush Parker. Yeah, Cause he'll still fight. He's still you cool. get you a, you get you a um, Solomon Hill. Yeah. You get you a, um, um, let me get a good example. Um, um, what's um, that boy named balling for the, uh, <laughs> for the Celtics old dude we just gonna be talking you about. You get you a Terry Rozier. Yeah. <laughs> no, Terry Rozier a nice looking no, old dude. No, I'm talking about, uh, no, the tall, the light skinned dude. Uh, you get you a Marcus Smart. Yeah, get you a Marcus Smart. Marcus man. Smart. Like an ugly dude. Regular daddy. You, you get you a Reggie Jackson. Yeah. You know, they got a whole team of ugly dudes who, you know, you get you, get with them, let them get your foot in the dough. They understand how to move and how everything. Yeah, goes. how to and be let around. A, let a couple super. But I just feel like then too, now after you do that, you, you you have to have the right pussy management to move forward. Okay. You can't just throw a knot. You can't fuck your way to the top. You got to you got to side your way to the top. You know what I'm saying? Like okay. But she got to fuck Patrick Beverly to get in the dope. You got to fuck Patrick Beverly. Like, but ain't no ain't no, no way no, around no, fucking Patrick Beverly. You got to get to him, but you got to bust him up though too. You got to go and give him that. You got to have Patrick Beverly loving you. Yes, and he talked that man. Look, you got to have Patrick Beverly bring you to the house. Around Austin Rivers now. And then you just relax. And then and you just, they're fine. You just be, and you, you want them you boys to be relax. looking at you like, God she, damn, you Patrick chilling? Beverly? And she chilling? Okay. You want me to cook you something, babe? You know what I'm saying? She ain't on, yeah, she ain't on the Instagram. She ain't posting no pictures of y'all or whatever. She just chilling, drinking, laughing chillin'. with y'all. Yeah, just giggling. Ain't doing, ain't doing too Planning much. Planning his hair. Ain't doing too much. Yeah, being, being all on Patrick, though. All about Patrick. All about Patrick. And then as soon as... Patrick I don't mess want up? Pa- yeah, I don't, I don't want, want Patrick no more. He come, he come. Now that's when the big bucks start rolling. That's when she make the, the huh. come up. But she got to play hard to get with the, the Austin cr- Rivers is in now. Can't just run on Austin. DeAndre J- you Jordan. Could, you mess around and run at Austin, miss your blessing. And hit, hit, yeah, hit, that's the same big time. Money. Here come big money. It come might through. not have been Austin. It might have been Rick Ross. Yeah. <laughs> you know Rick Ross, all about saving. He got, I think he keep a life raft in his car. I think he, I think it's under his seat and they could use it as a flotation device. He has a bunch of little small floaties for your arms yeah. in his pockets. I think when you get in the car with him, they play a little video where they like, where they show you and they'll show you how to <laughs> buckle your seatbelt and whether, whether, and the oxygen mask will drop in I, his car. I feel like Rick Ross has, uh, one of them little boats who save people, a uh, Red Cross boat behind him at all times. Just following him. Just in his car. Goes. Yeah. A boat. Yeah, Red Cross, but it's all red, and it say Red Ross. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, she got she got the once you but yeah, there you got a match. So this is right. the Patrick Beverly story that actually happened this week. Patrick Beverly's mama was on um on um The Price is Right. With a wig on. Did you see it? Patrick Beverly's mama was on The Price is Right and she had a shirt on that said NBA Mom. Why she got up there, she 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 bid right. The girl got up there, she won a call. She was hype, mm-hmm. hopping around. Then she went to the um to the wheel and spun the wheel. Dude had 95 cents. Mm-hmm. She hit a dollar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dude fell on the ground, passed out. You got to watch the video. It's hilarious. The little dude just, he just fell straight down. She goes in the showcase showdown and I think she won both um both prizes. Mm-hmm. Another cup. God's plan. And she in the whole all the colors, all the Patrick Beverly, um, Richard Beverly, yeah. um, Frankie Beverly, yeah. Maze, Maze, um, um yeah. Beverly, yeah. Beverly Bever- Hills Cobb. Beverly Hills, yeah. Bev- um Axel Foley, yeah. um Beverly. Beverly Beverly. Yeah, mm-hmm. Beverly. Mama Beverly. Beverly, 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 Beverly. Yeah, Bev, Bev DeVoe. Yeah, all of them was there. Bev, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah Bev, Bev, just Bev, just Bev, Bev Beverly, Bev <laughs> Beverly was there. Everybody was. They there. all ran up to the stage and they was hopping in the cars, yeah. cooning it up. I just thought it was a black moment. Look here, it was a moment in black here, history. Listen, listen here. When your child is talented <laughs> and you have worked all your life to make sure that little black ugly boy stay out, because he is black and ugly. But he reached, so he might. I mean, Bella, yeah, yeah, of course. Trash. Like Lil Wayne used to be black and ugly too. Yeah, Lil Wayne's just ugly right now. But okay, um, you know, listen, you probably been watching the Price and Right all your life. It's a little, it's a woman, you know, come home off work with your feet up, Patrick over there rubbing your corns, your bunions. Y'all watching Price is Right, and now you get to be on the show and you hit. You supposed to turn up? Yeah, Patrick Beverly ain't LeBron James. Them, he is a rich black man. Entry level rich, well, I, he, he make about, he, he make, he got a nice contract. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. He probably about, he, he got a hundred mil, but he got over seventy million now. Easy. I don't know. I'm not counting his pockets. Yeah, right I ain't counting. Just saying. I'm just thinking. You after that nigga pockets? No, you know pocket. you gotta fuck him if you gonna. Go no, after I'll his send somebody to do that. <laughs> like I would help little, little Gloria make sure she does. But go ahead. Anyway, but uh, you know you supposed to turn up. That's a hard life you been living, man. Live, listen, live your life. Jump in them cars, jump on them cars. Yeah. Whatever you want to do, just know you gotta put some taxes on y'all. She, man. she need no. She absolutely needs to go donate those cars. To who? What kind of car was? It was like some, it was like a Sentra, and maybe not even a Sentra. It was a Volk, Ford Polka. Oh, so it was some shit like, yeah, yeah. She's going to get to a family. Yeah, family. you're right. Probably give it to get the family. family. Give it to the family. Get, get to, get to Chris, and them with three kids. Let her keep the full focus. Driving that old 94 Honda. Get to her. You know what I'm mm. saying? She donate them cars. Cheryl Beverly. Cheryl Beverly. No, Chrisha Beverly. Chrisha Beverly. <laughs> Go watch that video. Uh, another thing, a couple of things that I would definitely want to touch on. One, um, so last year, I think this was our third ever podcast and right around the time. So it's happening right around the time where it's going to be like the one year anniversary of this. So I'm going to have to talk to Roger about this and make sure he gets on board. Um, but we did a podcast called Dear White Folks, which mm-hmm. was in re- which was um, in response to I Dear White People. That. Dear White People, Volume 2 is premiering tomorrow. Oh, I'm on Which it. is Friday, May 4th, which will probably be today or yesterday. They're going to all the episodes up? Um, all the episodes tomorrow. Don't call me tomorrow. I'm watching it all night. So so we're going to take notes and we're going we're gonna to probably flash back and do Dear White People, Volume 2. Um, Dear White Folks, Volume 2. So mm-hmm. that's coming real soon. I know What's y'all going to like that. Hey, tell us what y'all want our next Blackbuster videos to be. Oh yeah, Specific we got a couple in the works, but you know, I want to be lazy sometimes. Hear, just comment, make a comment, or shoot shoot out a text, or go on my IG. Uh, I'm not gonna tell y'all on live. You gotta find me. <laughs> it's the ugly man on there on the picture, <laughs> the Patrick Beverly of the picture. Uh, uh, go on there and find me. The, you know Patrick, what I'm the Patrick Beverly of the podcast. But now y'all niggas. Nah. Um, another thing, just real quick, Eric Reed filed a um, collusion grievance this week, <sighs> meaning that he's the second one. Him and um Kaepernick. He's saying the NFL, like, I, the fact that if Eric Reed can't get a job in this league, it ain't because, oh, boy, that boy can't play quarterback in this That's league. Nice. Eric Reed was ranked more, the top four safeties in free agency this year. He and he play. hasn't got a, and he hasn't got a job yet. Yeah. Um, it's, I mean, listen, it's the NFL. The NFL and NBA are two different things. Absolutely. I but feel like, uh, like, NFL is Django and NBA is, Ray. <laughs> yeah. 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 Almost, but Ray, just a little lighter Ray. Got like it. rock. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Without the Y. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, like, because NBA, like, hey, listen here. Do y'all thing. 
protest as a team, whatever we, I, I'll come down here as the, as, as the uh, what you call it, stand by your commissioner and stand by y'all. It's wrong, whatever, whatever. <laughs> and it felt like, hey, chicken jib is over there, nigga. No, when they shot that dude in, uh, when they shot uh, Stephon Clark in um, Sacramento, the Sacramento owner of the team came yeah. on the court with the team. They all had exactly. shirts on. They all was like talking about the community. They boycotted the team. Yeah. They got some resolution. They talked about it, yeah. whatever. In the NFL, they like, fuck y'all niggas. Yeah. Go to work. All and he wasn't on we Jerry Jones shit either. Rob, Rob respect him. He wasn't on that Jerry. Jerry Jones came out there. Okay, one, two, yeah, three. Yeah, yeah, Everybody kneel. Kneel, pop, and up. All right, now let's listen to the national anthem. I don't like that. Nah, he was over there. He yeah, was over there home, talking. Man. I don't like that. Yeah, I, the the second he he came through like he's supposed to come through. Yeah, I mean it's, the only issue is that he. Um, I mean he's a minority too. He like a. Um, I mean I guess that's debatable. He's not an underrepresented minority, but he's, no. I think he's an Indian guy. Um, but like like his his yeah I mean. He was cool. He was rich to everybody. Yeah. When you rich, when you want to make money like that, most people believe they white. Ask Kanye. Block people. Block. Block, <laughs> people. Block people. Hey, I'm gonna tell you something that we need to talk about on um on a um on an episode of Educated Ignorance. What? Do you know what the term neurotypical and neurodiverse mean? I learned that today no, at, at, the, at a training. <laughs> I'm gonna be using this shit all the time. So neurodiverse, like brain diverse, mm-hmm. and neurotypical, like brain typical. Mm-hmm. Neurotypical means regular ed. Neurodiverse means special ed. That boy neurodiverse. Okay. Like, like I can't wait to be talking to like some principal or something, and they're like, and, and and they're gonna be like, yeah. So that kid, um, he's in special ed. Oh, um, neuro, he's neuro- neurodiverse. <laughs> Oh, Excuse me. You all see that's your problem. Ne- yeah. Neuro, neuro. Y'all ain't trying to shine on he's, people. He's man. neurodiverse. That's why people don't like you. Um, so that's I'm gonna need you to like. use the correct that's terminology. Why don't like you. As you were, continue. <laughs> that's why folks don't like you. Can you continue now? <laughs> that's why I block people. Most block people. <laughs> Most block principals would hate me. <laughs> Every block principal. No, would hate the you. white principals would be like, "Oh no, oh did I say gosh. the wrong word? <gasps> it changed. It's when, when did they change it? What is it called? Neuro. Yeah. Neurodiverse. Write it down. Yeah, right. I'm sorry. I, I'm. Right like, I mean, can just, you come and do a training yeah, on that yeah, for my like, campus? Like, no, we'll pay you. It's peckhead. Special. <laughs> Nigga, five oh four. That ain't dumb as hell. <laughs> he just. He just bad. He bad. That's how it is. He's just bad. Hey, mama man. crazy too. I taught her back in sixty-five. Cue, cue that music up for nothing nice to say. You know they say if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. If you can't say something nice, don't say nothing at all. Nothing nice, nice to say, but I'll go nice. Hey man, I ain't got a lot, but uh, check it out, man. I hate this when I'm in a car with someone, and they refuse to use the GPS. Yeah, I'm saying it because I just came from a trip, bro. I get it. You think you know where you're going, so you don't need directions, but I'm not a fan of your cavalier attitude. Side note, does using the term GPS make me old school? <laughs> I mean, I know I'm old, so I ain't tripping, but I remember them garments. I remember them Magellans when people first got them. You ain't never been in a car with your family and your pops got to stick the D- GPS on the dashboard and plug it into the cigarette lighter? Still has one. <laughs> if your daddy like mine, he had a whole team of devices on the dashboard with multiple dongles plugging buku electronics to the car. The GPS was next to the radar detector that was next to the CB radio. Boy, I was ready for all conditions. I'm surprised <laughs> the car ain't just passed out and died from all of the juice being sucked away for all of the devices. Either way, that was years ago. And now all them devices is just in one app. Just download Waze or ask Siri where you're trying to go. You hooked up via Bluetooth, so your car going to just shout out the directions to you over the speakers. You're going to get where you're going quickly. I ask again, what the hell are you trying to prove? Even if you know where you're going, the app knows the traffic conditions. Everything. If they got wrecks, if they got homeless people on the street or bad driving people, if you ask CNH, that's, that's Asian people, black women and poor white people. Mm-hmm. All that to say. You a whole, whole out here if you don't use the app when I'm in the car with you. I don't care if we're going on a road trip or going to the corner store to get some gauze. I don't want to be in the car with you any longer than I have to. And I ain't got nothing nice to say about arrogant drivers who think they bet no better than a GPS. So I won't say nothing at all. And I hope you get a ticket and get stuck in traffic when I'm not in the car. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's a cool podcast. Man. Yeah, man. I mean, it is what it is, man. We we hopping back next week. Like I said, come it on, might Raj, be- man. We need you to get that. Say seven thirty, dog. Come on, man. <laughs> we got shit to do, bro. Like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's 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 no offense. It's just a no, real life scenario. Just man. say you ain't got you. You gonna be late. It's fine. We work around that. Yeah. I will. 
you know, it's just personalities. But just don't come when no. I, I rush back. I just told you I was on a trip. Yeah, I rush back from Boston for yeah, a particular and time, and then boy, I say, like I'm, I just hopped up on my little thing. I was doing the run over here. I ain't take no bath. I'm gonna have to ask. I'm gonna have to ask um, Raj if he wants to um, contribute something to the podcast. If he can send me record something, and send it tonight. I'll put it on the podcast. He's not gonna do that. He will. It's too much like work. Nah, he can do it. He's not even gonna listen to the podcast. He's never gonna hear that we said this. Roger, Roger Trump, come out and play. <laughs> Roger West, Roger West, <laughs> Roger Beverly. <laughs> <laughs>